The year was 1974 when a television series by the name of Little House on the Prairie first graced our screens. This heartwarming show, based on Laura Ingalls Wilder's autobiographical books, offered viewers a glimpse into the challenges and triumphs of the Ingalls family as they navigated life on the American frontier. But have you ever wondered about the lesser known facts and anecdotes that surround this beloved TV series? As we delve into the world of Little House on the Prairie, y'all discover intriguing details and perhaps some surprising stories that have remained hidden from the spotlight. What enduring qualities make this TV series an everlasting symbol of the industry, cherished by generations of viewers? Before we unravel these intriguing tidbits, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Little House on the Prairie. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's journey back in time and uncover the hidden facets of this beloved series. Little House on the Prairie, a beloved TV series that aired from 1974 to 1983, was based on Laura Ingalls Wilder's autobiographical books and chronicled the adventures of the Ingalls family as they settled in the American frontier in the late 19th century. The show revolved around the tight-knit Ingalls family, with iconic characters like Charles and Caroline Ingalls, their daughters Laura, Mary, and Carrie, as well as lovable townsperson Nellie Olson and kindly Mr. Edwards. The series stood out for its heartwarming and wholesome storytelling, addressing timeless themes of family, community, and resilience in the face of adversity. It left an indelible mark on popular culture, celebrated for its depiction of simpler times and the enduring values it represented. Little House on the Prairie continues to be cherished by fans of all ages and remains a testament to the enduring appeal of family-centered, values-driven television. The last farewell marked the poignant conclusion of the beloved TV series, Little House on the Prairie. In this two-hour movie, the town's residents took matters into their own hands, dynamiting all of the buildings when a railroad executive claimed ownership of Hero Township. This unique ending was the brainchild of Michael Landon, the show's creator and star. Landon felt it was a more fitting conclusion, contrasting with the mundane alternative of the town being raised by bulldozers. It added a powerful, dramatic twist to a series known for its heartwarming and wholesome storytelling. The TV series Little House on the Prairie, which aired from 1974, is known for its heartwarming storytelling and timeless themes of family and community. Created by Michael Landon, the show became a cherished part of popular culture, emphasizing enduring values. One unique aspect of the series is how it concluded with The Last Farewell, a two-hour movie where town residents dynamited their buildings to thwart a railroad executive's claim. This dramatic twist, devised by Landon, added a powerful ending to a series celebrated for its wholesome storytelling. Karen Grassel has spoken in interviews about a controversial moment in the history of the 1974 TV series Little House on the Prairie. After NBC decided to cancel the show, its creator and star, Michael Landon, made a surprising and somewhat spiteful decision. He chose to blow up the Walnut Grove set, a move that Grassel described as sad. She expressed her wish that he hadn't done that. This event marked an unusual and memorable moment in the show's history, leaving fans with mixed feelings about the conclusion of a series known for its heartwarming storytelling. It's a testament to the complex dynamics and decisions behind the scenes of this beloved 1974 TV series. Victor French's departure from the hit TV show Little House on the Prairie in 1977 marked a significant moment in the series' history. He left the show for a two-year stint on Carter Country, a move that surprised many of his fans. During this hiatus, the producers of Little House on the Prairie faced the challenge of filling the void left by his character, Isaiah Edwards. To address this, they introduced Merlin Olson's character, Jonathan Garvey, as Charles Ingall's new sidekick. Merlin Olson's arrival brought a breath of fresh air to the show. His portrayal of Jonathan Garvey quickly won the hearts of the audience with his charisma and strong on-screen chemistry with Michael Landon, who played Charles in Galls. The dynamic between Charles and Jonathan added new layers to the show's narratives, and the character of Jonathan became a beloved member of the Little House community. However, fate took a turn when Victor French decided to return to Little House on the Prairie after Carter Country was cancelled. This left the producers with a dilemma how to gracefully transition the show back to its original dynamic with Victor French reprising his role as Isaiah Edwards. 
To address this, Merlin Olsen's character, Jonathan Garvey, was gradually phased out of the series. While fans of Jonathan were saddened to see him go, it allowed the show to focus on the enduring friendship between Charles and Isaiah. The impact of these behind-the-scenes changes didn't end there. Michael Landon and Merlin Olsen had developed a strong working relationship during their time on Little House on the Prairie. As a result, when Olsen's character was phased out, he was given the opportunity to star in his own series, Father Murphy, which was also produced by Michael Landon. This not only showcased Olsen's talent, but also highlighted the collaborative nature of the entertainment industry at the time. In retrospect, the shifts in the Little House on the Prairie cast lineup reflect the ever-evolving nature of television production. Victor French, Merlin Olsen, and Michael Landon each left their unique mark on the world of entertainment during their time on the series and in their subsequent projects, making their contributions a memorable part of television history. The black locomotive used in Little House on the Prairie was the famous Sierra 3 locomotive, featured in many movies and TV shows for nearly a century. Its rich history and impressive on-screen presence made it an integral part of the entertainment industry. This iconic locomotive was not just limited to the small screen, it also graced the big screen in several memorable films, leaving an indelible mark on the history of cinema. Its stunning red and gold enamel three medallion, a symbol of its enduring legacy, made it easily recognizable to viewers. The Sierra 3 locomotive's contribution to the world of entertainment extended far beyond a single show. Its majestic presence added a unique and timeless touch to various productions, making it a symbol of classic Hollywood and American storytelling. The TV series Little House on the Prairie from 1974 had its share of interesting behind-the-scenes stories. One such story is about the character's theme music. Mary and Albert had their own theme music that often played during their scenes. Even Bandit, the Ingalls Border Collie, had his own theme music. Mr. Edwards also had his Dan Tucker theme that played during some of his scenes. This added a unique touch to the show, giving each character their own musical identity. Another intriguing aspect of the series is the involvement of Linwood Boomer, a scriptwriter with several credits to his name. He is best known for creating Malcolm in the Middle. Interestingly, Alison Arngrim, who played Nellie Olson, called him impossibly handsome in a recent interview. Boomer was brought in as Mary's boyfriend two after boyfriend one, Redane's Pira, didn't work out with Melissa Sue Anderson, who played Mary. It's said that Anderson complained to Michael Landon about her discomfort with Redane's, leading to his firing, and Boomer's casting as Mary's new boyfriend. Finally, speaking of casting, Alison Arngrim, who portrayed Nellie Olson, had an interesting journey to her role. She originally auditioned for the role of Laura Ingalls, then for Mary Ingalls. However, it was when she auditioned for Nellie Olson that she was hired on the spot. These tidbits shed light on the unique elements and dynamics of the beloved 1974 TV series Little House on the Prairie. They add depth to the show's history and the people who contributed to its success. Little House on the Prairie was more than just a TV show. It was a production filled with fascinating behind-the-scenes stories and interesting characters. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the heartwarming world of the 1974 TV series, Little House on the Prairie, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the unique connection you formed with this timeless show. Little House on the Prairie was more than just a series. It was a glimpse into the human spirit, resilience, and the enduring bonds of family. It transported us to a simpler time when life's struggles were met with determination, love, and the strength of the human spirit. Perhaps you found yourself cheering for the Ingalls family as they faced life's trials, or maybe you felt a deep connection with one of the unforgettable characters who left a mark on your heart. Now, it's your turn to share your cherished memories and thoughts about this iconic series. What did it mean to you? Did it inspire you in some way, or does it hold a special place in your heart for a particular reason? Your reflections and stories are a testament to the enduring power of Little House on the Prairie. We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories, so please take a moment to share in the comments below. Let's celebrate the magic of this show together, just as the characters celebrated the simple joys of life on the prairie. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey through Walnut Grove. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated, and we look forward to hearing your stories. Until next time, keep the memories alive, and keep your love for Little House on the Prairie burning bright.